Today, the strongest residential property price growth ever. Hi again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Well, I've noticed posts covering finance and property news with a distinctively Australian flavour. Well, according to the ABS, residential property prices rose 23.7% through the year to December 2021. And that's the strongest annual growth since the Residential Property Price Index series began in the September quarter 2003. The ABS said that house price growth continues to outpace growth for attached dwellings. House prices rose 27.5% through the year, while prices of attached dwellings rose 14%. Results were consistent with a range of housing market indicators. New lending commitments for housing rose to a record high value in the December quarter of 2021, and the days on market fell and sales transaction volumes increased. Record low interest rates and strong demand have continued to support growth in property prices, the ABS said. So here, of course, they're drawing the direct connection between price growth and lending growth. So I wanted to walk you through the details in this report because I do think there are some quite significant observations to be made as we go through. And the first obvious one is the 23.7% rise over the last 12 months and a rise of 4.7% over the quarter. And they said that the total value of residential dwellings in Australia rose $512 billion to $9.9 trillion in the quarter. And the mean price of residential dwellings rose $44,000 to $920,100. No wonder there's a housing affordability problem. And they detailed the change across the states with the quarterly change most significant in Brisbane up 9.6% and lowest in Darwin at 1.5%. And the change for the year shows that Hobart rose 29.8%. That's the top of the pack, while Darwin was 13%. And it's worth reflecting, by the way, that mortgage stress in Darwin, according to my modelling, is relatively benign, whereas mortgage stress in Hobart is off the scale. And they show that the value of dwelling stock, which was 9.9 .9 trillion, rose by 920 billion to reach 10.7 trillion through the December quarter. So here are the price movements across the capital cities over the quarter, just illustrating the variation from December 2019 to December. 2021. And across that whole sphere, only one quarter, June 2020, was a drop. And of course, that was in the midst of the COVID lockdowns. Then, of course, they cut the interest rates and ran all the stimulus. And guess what? Prices rose again. And here is the information across the states showing the most recent quarter with Brisbane at 96 and Darwin at 1.5. And they said that the weighted average with the eight capital cities rose 4.7% this quarter and rose 23.7% over the last 12 months. And the capital city residential property price index rose 4.1% in Sydney, 3.9% in Melbourne, 9.6% in Brisbane, 6.8% in Adelaide, and 2.9% in Perth. And here's another way of looking at the information, the chart over the last 10 years, which highlights the fact that, well, significant momentum in recent times, which of course coincided with the ultra low interest rates and the massive amount of government stimulus. And by the way, it also coincided with minimal migration. Migration has pretty much been zero for the last few months. And also, of course, we had a boom of first time buyers and more recently, and arrival of property investors. Now this is where the analysis gets quite interesting because they split out the house price index 
from the attached dwelling price index, which of course includes the high rise and low rise apartments and other attached properties. And it's quite clear that the boom has been predominantly in houses rather than apartments. And they say that house prices rose 5.3% over the quarter, following a rise of 5.7% in September, and they rose 27.5% over the last 12 months. That's the largest annual rise since the commencement of the series. Whereas for attached dwellings, the price index rose 3.2% in the quarter, following a 3.1% rise in September, and they've risen 14% over the last 12 months. And that's the largest rise since the June 2010 quarter. And they also provide it for each of the main locations. Now in Sydney, the house price index rose 4.5% in the quarter, following a rise of 7.4% in the September quarter, and they rose 32.9% over the last 12 months. That's the largest annual rise since the commencement of the series, whereas attached dwellings rose 3.3% over the quarter, following a rise of 3.6% in the September quarter, and they've risen 15.5% over the last 12 months. And they made the comment that price rises are most evident in the middle, the $925,000 to $1.4 million segment of the market. Now, in Melbourne, house prices rose 4.2% in the quarter, following a rise of 3.8% in the September 21 quarter. And they've risen 23% over the last 12 months. And they said that price rises were observed across all segments of the market. Amongst attached dwellings, the price index rose 3.1% over the quarter, following a rise of 2.9% in the September quarter 2021. And they've risen 11.8% over the past 12 months. Price rises were most evident in the middle to upper range of the market segments, $660,000 to $890,000, they said. Looking at Brisbane now, house prices rose 10.8% over the quarter. That followed a rise of 6.9% in the September quarter 2021, and they've risen 31.6% over the last 12 months. Prices were observed rising across all segments of the market, they said. And for attached dwellings, the price index rose 3.9% over the quarter, following a rise of 2.3% in the September quarter, and they've risen 11.7% over the last 12 months. And price rises were most evident in the upper and middle segments of the market, they said. In Adelaide, prices rose for houses 7.7% over the quarter. That's the largest quarterly rise since the commencement of the series, and they've risen 27.2% over the last 12 months, while attached dwellings rose 3.1% over the quarter, and they rose 11.5% over the last 12 months. Perth Houses rose just 2.9% over the quarter, and they rose 6.5% over the last 12 months, whereas attached dwelling prices rose 2.3% over the quarter, and they've risen 12.1% over the past 12 months. Hobart's houses rose 6.7% over the quarter and have risen 30.5% over the last 12 months, whereas attached prices rose 4.9% over the quarter and they rose 25.7% over the last 12 months, and they said that's the largest rise since the commencement of the series. Darwin house prices rose 1.3% over the quarter, and they've risen 13.3% over the last 12 months, and attached prices rose 2.1% over the quarter and 12.3% over the last 12 months. And Canberra rose 7% over the quarter, and 32.8% over the past 12 months for houses, whereas attached dwellings rose 4.3% over the quarter and 16.8% over the last 12 months. And here is a chart showing the growth in value, the preliminary estimate of the total value of residential dwellings in Australia in the December quarter 2021 was $9.9 .9 trillion, up $512 billion, from $9.3 trillion in the September quarter of 2021. The value of residential dwellings have risen more than $2 trillion since the December quarter of 2020. And of the total value of residential dwellings, 
9.4 trillion was owned by households. And the number of residential dwellings rose by 44,800 to 10,761,900. And the median price rose $44,000 to $920,100. Now it's worth noting that the variation across the state still exists. The mean price of residential dwellings in New South Wales rose by $47,700 to $1.2 million. And that was the highest in the country. The second highest mean price was in the ACT at $979,600, followed by Victoria at $956,100, whereas the lowest mean price at $489,000 was in the Northern Territories. So standing back, what you can see here is that we've had a real boom in prices. But it is, as I've argued several times, completely linked to ultra-low interest rates, very loose lending from the banks, and all of the government incentive schemes which were designed predominantly to support the construction sector through things like Home Builder and the Homeland Package programs. Of course, the first owner grants, particularly those offering to underwrite a proportion of the borrowing, also helped. Although more recently, first-time buyer interest has faded or more likely has been priced out thanks to the resurgence of investors. Now, I must tell you that this massive rise in property prices is fake when it comes to real value, insofar that most of it is credit-driven. And it's unlikely that we're going to see anything like this momentum again unless we see substantial further stimulus, directly or indirectly, from the Reserve Bank or from the government. But I still believe that it is likely that the government and the Reserve Bank will do all they can to keep the bubble going because the alternative, a collapse in prices, will be unthinkable. Not only would it destroy that theoretical wealth that people are sitting on, but it will destroy consumer confidence and it would bust financial stability because, of course, the banks are ultimately leveraged to the hilt themselves. And whilst individual households, if they gain difficulty, will cause a problem for the household. If many households get into difficulty and prices fall, that's a problem for the banks and therefore it's a problem for Australia. We have backed ourselves into a remarkable corner here with prices way too high relative to income or GDP or any other metric you care to mention. And yet we're talking about more stimulus and more encouragement for people to buy. I wonder when we'll learn the lesson, but until then, it wouldn't surprise me to see prices going even higher in the short term, although we don't think that is sustainable. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.